But tonight's topic is, you know how sometimes, y'all, you're in a relationship with somebody and you want them to change. You know, it might be you want to take the relationship to the next level. Um, it might be um, you're in the next level, but the person has become complacent and they don't want to change. And and so the question is, you ask yourself, will they ever change? And sometimes the will they ever change pertains to you. Will you ever change? So tonight is going to be um, one of those nights where we got to check ourselves. We're going to check ourselves, but it's going to be good though, because when I was telling my wife what I was going to talk about, I re it was reminding me of actually myself and when I actually changed. And, you know, my, and, and the story goes kind of like this. You know, a lot of you know my story, but the go story goes kind of like this. It was, you know, my wife and I, were dating. We weren't really dating. She, well, we were dating, courting her. Some of the time we were dating. At the at the beginning, she was going with me, but I wasn't going with her. But then we started dating. But um, you know me, I was out there doing all the things that I was doing, the wretched stuff that I was doing. Um, just being honest, I was out there slipping and dipping, doing whatever. Um, I, I wasn't married at the time, but I was in a relationship, and I'll never forget it. Um, the day that I changed, see, listen to me carefully tonight. Change happens in an instant. The process of change, the manifestation of the change may take years. Okay. But process, but the truth is that you change in an instant. You change when you decide that I'm no longer going to be in the current state that I'm in. I'm no longer going to be in the current situation that I'm in. And so when we get into it tonight, I'm going to talk to you about why some people never change, why you never change. All right. Some of you never change. And a lot of you are in relationships or, or, or in a relationship or want to be in a relationship. However, you want to be in the relationship. You want a different relationship but you're not willing to be different. You're not willing to act different. You're not willing to be different. So the relationship cannot be different unless you're different. And so what we're going to talk about is tonight, when I tell you the story of how I changed. So, so a lot of people are in relationships now and you're wondering if the person that you're with, will they change? And it could be, I don't know what they're doing. It could be they're, they're not non-committal, could be cheating. It could be anything. All right. Um, but people want to know. So we're going to delve right into it. Plus, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this, because I got a letter. I've been getting a lot of letters in by not really a letter. I make it into a letter, but it came through my inbox. All right. Because let me be clear. Let me be clear about this. Anybody and everybody can change. Um, now, will a person change? that's another story. And I'm going to give you the signs. I'm going to let you know if they'll change or not. Uh, if they're he or she ever change. I did. This is not gender specific because, um, because this, these principles apply whether you're a man or a female, I mean, man or woman, it does not matter. But let me start out by saying this. Um, people don't change. Listen to me carefully. All uh, right, you did, Chanel. Chanel says she binge watch. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, and thank you for being on the live tonight. We're growing. We are growing, and um, and and I could be, I couldn't be who I am without all of you helping me and being a part of my tribe and being who you are. Thank you so much. All right, get back to business. So, first thing you got to understand is most people don't want to change. I mean, well, let me say this. Most people want change, but people don't want to make change. All right. Because the making, the idea of making change requires you to do something. It requires you to act different, contrary to what you've been doing. All right. And so it requires that. Now, that being said, listen, I want you to write this down, right? Please write this down. People will only change when the pain to stay the same is greater than the pain to change. Now I'll say it again. People will only change when the pain 
to stay the same is greater than the pain to change. See, what you want to understand about human beings are this. True change happens. We're either motivated, people are motivated by two reasons. Number one, toward pleasure or away from pain, all right? Every human being, everything you do in your life is based on that motivation, either toward pleasure or away from pain, okay? Now, the question is, when a man is in a relationship, and he's and he is good in the relationship and you take him back after he cheat you take him back he does this you take him back there is no pain he does not experience any pain so he's like i'm a sweet talker i'm gonna buy something good and i'm back in all right and by the same token women she doesn't change because the man does not there is there are no consequences no pain for not changing. So you say she doesn't do whatever it is you want her to do. Doesn't have sex enough. I get that all the time. Doesn't have sex enough. And you are sexually frustrated as a man. Okay. And y'all, I'm just going on what people have told me, what my coaching has told me. And I said, she won't change, but there is no pain associated with staying the same. All right. Now I'm not saying you have to leave her. I'm not saying you have to leave him, but what I want to tell you tonight how to know if the person will never change. All right. Number one, number one, there are three things, three reasons. And I might give you a fourth reason, a bonus way, but these are the three reasons that I know. Number one, he or she is unwilling to self-reflect, not, will, not willing to look at how their actions affects the relationship. When you have a person, it could be you, when you have a person who is unwilling to look in the mirror, as we call it, the mirror work, the mirror work tells you, makes you self-reflect. It makes you look at yourself to say, what am I doing to cause this? What, what, what is my participation? What am I doing? Now, it is easy to point the finger. It is easy to say, you're not doing this. I won't give you any sex because you don't wash my car. Or I won't give you any sex because you don't do this. Or I won't do this because of this. And so what happens is it is much easier. It is much easier to tell the other person to say what they are or are not doing. All right. And so when a person, this is, this is what tells me, this is what I know. When I do counseling for couples, I do counseling for couples and I coach men too, y'all, a lot of them, but men just don't be out there like that. They don't be out there loud. They don't be saying, well, by the time the men come to me, they are hurting. They are hurting and they feel like either their relationship is over or they want a relationship badly. So by the time they come to me, that you know, because they've thought about all of the things, you know, like, damn, I can't do this on my own. And, and I picked the call up. So, but let me say this. If you are not willing to say, first of all, the reason I changed from the scoundrel that I was is because when my wife walked away that day, and there was a day she told me I'm done and I, I have to love myself more than I love you. And, you know, I, and I told y'all the story. I waited seven days. I was like, she gonna call back. I was like, so what? She gonna call back, whatever. I don't need you. All of the things I was saying in my head, but I was lying to myself. And then I realized something. When she was gone, I got to experience my life without her. I got to experience life, you know, without her in it. And all of a sudden I realized it forced me to make a decision to say, you know what? I don't want my life without her in it. I don't want to be this man without her in it. And the truth is the pain of her not being in my life was greater than the pain of me staying the same, staying the scoundrel that I was, not asking, taking our relationship to the next level, getting one she wanted to get married, you know, and I knew she was a wifey type, but I was like, look, I was non-committal because I was, uh, I was commitment averse. I mean, like many, many people are not just men, women too. And, but I decided that day I had to self-reflect on how everything that I had done, 
everything that I had done in the relationship, how it had affected the relationship up to that point. But before then, I was unwilling to do that. Before then, I'm like, you tripping, you insecure. You are all of the things that deflect or they, they keep, we call it fogging in some psychological realms. And fogging is you want to take the spotlight off of you and put fog around it. So now, you know, so now it's all on the other person. That's just like the person, okay, I'll give you a prime example of fogging. Like, you know the dude cheat, right? You go through his phone and you see the text messages, the naked pictures of ass and everything. And then he says, oh, you you going through my phone. Oh, you're going to go through my phone like that. Oh, well, why would you go through my phone? And what he's doing is, the fact we call that, he put fogging. He's putting fog on the real issue, taking out the real issue so the spotlight won't be on him. And then, and then, that's when, that, that's when he talks about that. You know, I was good at that. But I'm going to tell you something. It was only when I decided that I was going to reflect on me because self-reflection is a powerful thing, y'all. And, and I get all of my clients, because let me be honest, in every relationship, no one person is all at fault. Never. I don't care if the person cheated. I don't care. You had a part in it. Maybe you didn't have a part in the cheating, all right? Because that's the thing that you focus on, because that's, because that's the thing that causes us, caused the most pain. But no, you had a part in the relationship. If it was nothing more than... I picked that person. I overlooked a lot of things that they did. I accepted them back when I should not have. And if you're not willing to reflect on your part, you cannot truly heal and you cannot truly move forward to have a great relationship, y'all. The reason I have a great relationship now is because of the self-reflection I did, the mirror work that I did. And a lot of times we don't want to look at the mirror because... The mirror, what you see is ugly. I remember my coach one time told me this. Look in the mirror. Tell me what you see. White pupils. <laughs> brown eyes. Now he said, look deeper. Okay. I'm like, I'm tripping. Like, I don't see shit. That's what I'm saying. So I remember when he would come back, when we would go again. He said, tell me what you see. White pupils, brown eyes. And then one day, and then one day, I looked in the mirror, but I looked beyond the obvious. I looked beyond my physicalness and I could see into who I was as a person. And I could see the person I was becoming. I could truly see a man who had transformed from a man of no integrity um, to a man of integrity. I realized something. I realized, but it was only me looking at the other man could I compare the two. Oh, that's deep. It's only me looking at the other man that I could compare the two. And a lot of y'all, you cannot grow because you're unwilling to look at the other person. The other, you're not willing to look at the mirror and who you are today because it hurts because it's ugly, because I can't blame anybody else when I'm doing it that way. And a lot of us, we want to blame our partners, our partner this, they that, they that, but you don't want to look at yourself. And so you, I always tell people they ain't going to ever change if they're unwilling. Number one was unwilling to self-reflect. Okay. Not willing to look at the things they do as it contributes to the relationship, as it contributes to not only the relationship, the conflict, the, the, the everything, the lack of communication, all of that, all of that, y'all, that's number one. That's how when a person is unwilling to do that, they're not going to change. Number two, ooh, ooh, coach, number two, mm, all right, this is how you know a person will never change. He or she, get this, complains about, talks down about who you are not what you do. Oh, now a person can talk to you about what you do. Okay. You do this, you do that. That can be rectified. Okay. That can be right. But when a person 
categorically that uh, attacks who you are as a human being, as a person. When that happens, then they're never going to change as it pertains to you. Because I've seen it, I've seen it with, with a lot of women who feel like they have married a person because they wanted to get married and they feel like that they have settled. They feel like I shouldn't have married this person, but who else was going to marry me? All right. And then they married the person. But the truth of the matter is they don't like who the person is is at their core. I didn't say they didn't like what they do. Oh, oh, this person it, it doesn't wash dishes. Okay, that's what they do. But the truth is, they don't like who you are. I don't like the way you make decisions. I don't like your, the, the, the thought processes you have. I don't like the way you think. I don't like the way you feel. I don't, that's the core being of the person. If that happens, they are not going to change that. They're not. You can change your opinion about, you can change your opinion about what I do because I can change what I do, but I'm not going to change who I am and my core values. Now, there are some uh, values I can adopt. Now, I gr granted, granted, when I changed, I became a different person, but my core, but the core of me, I changed my behavior. But the core of who I was, I'm the same person. I'm loud, obnoxious, speak my mind. All of those things. That's who I was. My wife accepted me who I was and she liked who I was. She didn't like the behavior of the, the shit I was doing behind her back, slipping and dipping at that time when we weren't married. She didn't like that. But but who I was as a person, she loved who I was. And, and here's the thing. When a person complains about who you are, they ain't changing that. And then no matter how much you try to make them want you, love you, how much you try to get them to validate you, you can do anything. You can wash clothes for their kids, pick the kids up. You can you can give them as much sex and any flip it any way you want it, I'll give it to you. And it won't matter because those are things you do. That's not who you are. And when a person doesn't fundamentally like who you are, you know what? You know what I'm going to say? They ain't going to change. They're not going to change. I don't give a shit what you do. It doesn't matter. It won't matter. But you're steady trying to make it work. You're steady trying to hope. You're hoping that if I do enough, the person will see the value of who I am if I do enough. And you can never do enough for the wrong person. You could never be enough for the wrong person. It won't matter. And a lot of us are finding that out. And so when so when I'm coaching people, let me let me let me share something with y'all. When I'm coaching people, when I'm coaching people, I tell them what well, first thing we got to do is we got to heal and we got to break down before we, before we even look in the mirror. I got to understand how you think. I got to understand who you are at your core being. If I don't understand, and a lot of us are so afraid to let somebody in that close because a lot of times we ugly. It's ugly right around there. And I don't mean physically ugly. I mean, the energy is ugly. I mean, the spirit is ugly. That's what I'm talking about. That shit is ugly. And then, and then that's why we don't want to face it a lot of times. So when we don't want to face it, why, I mean, how do you expect somebody else to want to face it? And so that's the thing I'm talking about. All right, and and and, and listen, and y'all hang on because I'm, I'm gonna give you the last one. Um, but I'm gonna give you the last one. But after that, I gotta tell y'all something that is amazing. Number three, and the last thing, how you know a, a person will never change is he or she expect expects you to change without doing so. Whenever somebody expects you to change, when it's always you, always you, no matter what they do, it's always you, they want you to change. Well, you need to do this and you need to do that, but they're unwilling to change. They expect you to change, but they won't. They expect you to change. They point out your flaws, but never themselves. They tell you what you're not good at. All right. But they're not willing to admit what they're not good at. And whenever you get that, whenever you have that, the person is not going to change. Period. That could be you. That could be some of you listening to me. And you have to question and ask yourself, am I willing to self-reflect? I have this thing that I do with all my personal clients. 
And that's why it takes so long. Cause you know, I, I started three months, six months, a year. And I do this thing called the self profile. All right. First is self-reflection. Then it's self-awareness. Then it's self-concept. Then it's your, then, then it boils down to the next one is self-love. The next one is self-determination. Then we get into self-discipline. And the last one is self-transcendence. Uh, before you get to self, I'm um, sorry, self-transcendence is self-care. And then it's self-transcendence. But everything is around self. And here's why. If you're the, the most important relationship you will ever have will be with the relationship that you have with yourself. If you're not willing to change the relationship you have with yourself, the other external relationships will never manifest correctly. I often tell people, pe listen, you people will change their opinion of you the day after you do, the day after you do. And, 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 and until you're willing to do that, it's not going to happen. So listen, let me say this, and I'm, I'm going to leave y'all with this. We've been, uh, Rose was on here last week. Rose is my partner, the online dating expert. If you were not on here last night, we are doing a master class. If you're saying, Ken, I'm ready to date, but I'm ready to think differently. Uh, and, 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 and I'm ready to open my heart and my mind to a new way of thinking. We created this master class. It's five weeks. And we're going to teach you not only how to be successful at online dating, how to, because a lot of us are not successful because we're doing the wrong shit. Listen, y'all, we're going to teach you how, not only am I going to teach you how to build your personal brand, how to do it, how to, how to build your profile where people want to, that where you are attract a certain amount. Rose was breaking down yesterday, Ken. You see why this profile works? This profile is good because of this. This profile is bad because of this. And I was like, yo, we're going to teach all of that in class. Then I'm going to teach you not only um, how to build your profile, we're going to teach you what sites that you need to be on based on your relationship goals. And then the last thing I'm going to teach you is how to communicate with men. It's for women. Listen, a lot of you are in your masculine energy. A lot of you are not communicating effectively. I, and, and I know this because I coach people like this. So I'm going to teach you the questions to ask. I'm going to teach you how to weed out the people who are not in alignment with you. But listen, this is the last week. We almost got everybody. We're only going to take 30 people. And I think we got close to it. We got five spots left. If you're just interested in make, having a conversation with me, I don't want to talk about anything else except for online dating. I think we have a few spots left because my TikTok people been calling just wanting to get free advice. I said, but see, you're going about it wrong. I said, I tell you about the online dating and I set up a free discovery call. And I said, listen, if you get in the class, I'll answer any question. Then you got me all the time. I charge $400 an hour and we're not even charging near that for what we're doing. I said, do you? And then I said, don't worry about it. I asked you a question. But listen, those of you who want to change, all I want to do is I want you to just say, I'd like the link to set up and uh, just set up a phone call. And I don't know how many spots we got left this week, but we only have five spots left for the class. But we got people are already booked for calls. I did the free call. We're getting rid of the free discovery call. This The, the deadline is Saturday night, midnight. Okay, that's the deadline. If you say I'm interested in finding someone, I'm interested and I'm, I'm interested because I'm tired of doing the things that I'm doing. Y'all, I'm, I'm great at this shit. This is my gift. God is giving me, he said, this is your sheep. And, and listen, I'm going to tell y'all something because I take this seriously. These are people's lives. And, and I and I put a lot of relationships together. Those of you who have watched, but a lot of people like to hear me talking. That's cool. And that's cool. I like to do that too. But if you, if you want to change, I'll give you a free, a 30 minute consultation with me, discovery, you know, I'll give it to you for free. Um, I, and, and if you put, just put, put it in there, I see some people putting it in there. I'll, I'll put the link, go book your call tonight because the spots are almost booked up. A lot of people from TikTok booked up. And, uh, all I'm saying is, look, let's do it. Either I or Rose will call you. We'll call you about the class that we're doing. And I'll talk to you about why you want to do it. Because some of you, it's not right. But some of you, it is right. It is the right time. Stop hesitating. Stop believing you less than. Because the doctor in the house, I don't care where you are. I, I just know where you want to go. And I can help you get there. I can help you get there. 
but I need your effort though. I need you to just say, Ken, I have a desire to be there. A lot of us, what we do is, you know what we say? I don't want no man. I don't need a man. I don't want a woman. But you lie to yourself and you create resistance. The truth is you do. Make it known. Make your attention known to the universe and say, I do want someone that I can love, that will love me unconditionally. I want someone that I can work through the good, the bad, and the ugly with. And stop saying what you don't want and begin focusing on what you do want. Then you tell the universe, I am open. My heart is open. My mind is open. And remember this, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. The Buddhist proverb said that, and I remember when it said at the time, I was like, dang, every time I was ready to change, the person that was supposed to guide me in that point in my life, they appeared. Maybe I'm your guide. 